This is going to be a quick guide on how you can break the game using Tainted Cane and have guaranteed success on every run. Using this method, you'll not only be able to get unlocks for Tainted Cane easily, but also other Tainted characters as well. I'll do a short explanation for those who are experienced with the game mechanics already, but if you need a more in-depth explanation, stick around afterwards and I'll go through the entire process step by step, as well as offer lots of tips on how you can guarantee success in every run. So the basic idea here is that we are going to use the D1 as well as the car battery and battery packs to create infinite consumables and thus give us infinite items we can craft. After you craft the D1 and the car battery, you'll need to craft a battery pack, which will spawn batteries on the ground. This will basically give us infinite charges of the D1 and infinite consumables which we can craft with. If you don't have access to all the consumables you need on one floor, it could be a smart idea to create infinite batteries with multiple battery packs and then craft a D20 to re-roll those batteries into random consumables. Now from here, you're pretty much good to go and you can craft any item you want as long as you know the specific crafting recipe. Or you can just fill up your bag with anything you want and create random items until you feel that you're strong enough to continue the run. Now for those that need a little bit more explanation on what's going on, let's go through this a little bit slower and talk specifically about every step of the process. How Tainted Kane works is that he cannot pick up normal pedestal items. Whenever he tries to, they'll turn into a random selection of consumables. And using the bag of crafting allows you to craft those consumables into items using specific crafting recipes. So when starting a run as Tainted Cane, it is very important that you do not pick up any of the consumables that you find throughout the floor, unless you feel that you need them to get other consumables. For example, using a bomb to blow up a stone chest, or a tented rock, or using a key to open a golden chest. I started this run on an XL floor for the sake of convenience, Having all these consumables on one huge floor really makes things simple, and I was able to get every single item I needed on Basement XL. However, consumables in the bag of crafting do carry over from floor to floor, so don't feel like you have to complete everything on one floor. Now, it's very important to remember that every item has multiple crafting recipes, so depending on your run, you need to judge what consumables to use on certain crafting recipes ahead of time. So what I did was I went through both item rooms and I destroyed both items and did not pick up any consumables or put anything in the bag of crafting until I had a good idea of what kind of drops were on the floor. I looked at the list of crafting recipes on platinumgod.co.uk and I decided that the easiest crafting recipe given the consumables that dropped on my floor was going to be five hearts one nickel, one penny, and one pill. This crafting recipe yields us the D1. The D1 is an active item that when used duplicates a random consumable item on the ground in the current room you are in. And for this guide, the D1 is required. There are other ways to do this, but I have found that this is the easiest and most consistent way to do it. So if you have not unlocked the D1, I would highly recommend it. So now that we have the D1, we need to craft the car battery. The car battery will make it so that our active items are used twice every time we use them, thus creating two copies of a consumable item every time we do the D1. Crafting the car battery can be rather difficult if you don't get the right drops. And this is where it is very important to understand the consumables that you have on each floor. If you do not have the consumables necessary for the item on the floor, you should take whatever you can get and move on. Right when I was about to do so, I became extremely resourceful. Judging by all the crafting recipes possible, it did not seem like I was going to be able to craft the car battery, but eventually, I found the super secret room, which contained a fortune telling machine, which after giving it a couple of pennies, yielded a tarot card. 
which allowed me to craft the car battery. This just goes to show how resourceful you need to be with this character. Tainted cane runs are not going to be fast, but you have to be slow and you have to take your time and figure out exactly what you need and what you have given the consumables that are dropped. And now that we have the car battery, we can make the battery pack which is a far easier crafting recipe to accomplish. Not only will the battery pack instantly charge our D1, it will also drop batteries on the ground that when picked up, will also charge our D1. This, mixed with the double active from the car battery, will now create infinite batteries, and thus give us infinite charges on our D1. And with these infinite charges, we can create infinite consumables of any type in order to create any item that we want. And while it's not necessary, I would also recommend crafting the battery, which allows us to have two charges of our active item. While this item is definitely not required, it does make the whole process a lot easier and quicker. The main consumables that you're going to need for each crafting recipes are red hearts, pennies, bombs, keys, spirit hearts, and nickels. So if you can, have one room where you can create an infinite number of each of those consumables in order to make things easier. And also to cut down on time, I would recommend creating more battery packs and having infinite battery rooms closer to the rooms with your consumables, just so there's less time running back and forth from creating a consumable and getting a charge for your D1. Nickels and spirit hearts may not spawn naturally on your run, so if you need to, it's a good idea to craft the D20 in order to reroll your consumables. So what you can do is create infinite batteries through battery packs and the D1, and then reroll all of those batteries with the D20 into random consumables. I would also recommend crafting the school bag so that you can hold two active items and have the D20 and the D1 at the same time. I know this may seem like an overwhelming cluster of items, but trust me, this is going to be extremely helpful in getting the more powerful items in the game. And now from here, you can make pretty much any item that you want. Your basic build is going to want to consist of great offense as well as defense to protect yourself from the stray bullet that may hit you if you're going too fast. For offense, my go-to build is Rock Bottom, Polyphemus, Soy Milk, Monstro's Lung, and Sacred Heart. This will give you an insanely high damage as well as rate of fire and homing missiles that will pretty much shred every boss in the entire game. But if you don't have rock bottom unlocked, which is unlocked by beating boss rush mode with Jacob and Esau, you can pretty much just make any powerful item combination and it'll work. You can do brimstone and sacred heart, you can do mom's knife and sacred heart, brimstone and ipecac, Pretty much anything you want will work as long as you have enough damage. I planned on turning into Tainted Lost, so I went a little overboard on defense. I took Holy Mantle, Guardian Angel, Nine Lives, Halo of Flies, Psy Fly, Ghost Pepper, and two more guppy items just to complete the transformation. At this point, you'll be doing enough damage to where you won't really need defense, but it's just in case to make sure that your time is not wasted. You'll be pretty much fine with just Psyfly here. If done correctly, you should have a one run for Tainted Cane. But, if you want to use this to complete other Tainted Cane's unlocks, all you have to do is craft Clicker. Clicker is an item that allows you to transform into another character. Beating the game this way will count for unlocks toward that character. So, this means that we can easily get unlocks for Tainted Lost, Tainted Lazarus, Tainted Jacob, any character you want. Now, there are a few catches when it comes to Clicker. This will only work in transforming you into other Tainted characters. This does not work for transforming into normal characters. Another caveat that comes with Clicker is that it removes the most recent item that you've picked up. This can be circumvented by crafting a bunch of random items 
for clicker to remove whenever you use it. One of the easiest items to make is Rotten Baby, which is only eight batteries, which is very simple considering all the batteries we have lying around. While this method is very tedious and will take a very long time if you want to craft specific items, it is worth it for guaranteed unlocks on these very annoying and difficult to play characters. However, you should realize that this is basically cheating, so don't go around bragging that you've got all the completion marks on Tainted Lost just because you used this exploit. However, it is legal, it's in the game, the developers intended for these items to be used this way, so don't let anybody make you feel too bad for doing it. And that's pretty much all you need to know. This is only the combination that I like to do because it's the most fun. If there's any other item combination that you like to make when crafting, let me know down below. And if this guide helped you, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.